Branch of the Sequoias in Visalia, California. And in this video, I'm going to go over solving linear equations that can be solved in one step. In the follow-up video, I'll go over uh, linear equations that require more than one step to solve. An equation is a mathematical statement of equality between two expressions. Something like 3x plus 5 is equivalent to or is equal to or is the same as 2x minus 7. Okay. That's an equation. We're saying that the expression on the left hand side 3x plus 5 is equal to the expression on the right hand side 2x minus 7. Now this is a conditional equation. It's not always true. It's only true for one particular value of x and our job is to find that value of x. A solution of an equation is a value that when substituted for the variable makes the equation true. So we're looking for the solution and we say that we solve the equation to find it. A couple of things that you need to know in order to be able to solve equations. First, the multiplication property of equality tells us that we can multiply both sides of an equation by the same non-zero number and we can divide both sides of the equation by the same non-zero number. You think of an equation like a scale that's in balance. If you change the weight in some way on one side, the scale is out of balance unless you do the same thing on the other side. Same thing here with an equation. Second thing that we need to know is the addition property of equality, which says that we can add a number to both sides of an equation or we can subtract the same number from both sides of an equation. Whatever you do on one side, you do the same thing on the other side. The rest of the video will be devoted to examples. Uh, this first example, we're trying to solve x plus 8 equals 35. The goal is to isolate the variable. Because when we get the equation down to this form, x is equal to a number, that number is our solution. Right now, this variable is not isolated. It has an 8 attached to it. You want to think about how is it attached, and then we will unattach it by doing the inverse operation. The 8 is attached by addition. To get rid of the 8, we'll subtract 8 on both sides of the equation. Now, what makes this work? Well, on the left side, 8 minus 8 is 0, and adding 0 to x just leaves x. On the other side, 35 minus 8 is 27. And that is our solution. And we write the solution inside a set of curly brackets. That denotes the solution set. Now we can check our equation, our solution, by plugging that value back in for x in the original equation. And we know that 27 plus 8 equals 35, so we found the right solution. What is attached to our variable? 15. How is it attached? Subtraction. How do we break subtraction? With addition. So if we add 15 on both sides, we're left with n equals 36 plus 15, or 51. So we've seen that we break addition with subtraction and vice versa. How is the 5 attached to the variable b in this problem? Well, when we see 5b, that's understood to be multiplication. The inverse of multiplication is division. So what we want to do in this problem is divide both sides by 5. Why does that work? Well, what is 5 divided by 5? 5 divided by 5 is 1. So we're left with 1b, and 1 times any number is just that number itself. So that isolates the variable for us. Dividing by that coefficient isolates the variable. On the other side, negative 45 divided by 5 is negative 9. So our solution set is negative 9. In this case, the variable y is being divided by the number 6 to break a division. We're going to use the inverse, which is multiplication. 
we can multiply both sides by the same non-zero number. Here, the 6 is cancel. Again, 6 divided by 6 is 1. Isolating the y. And 7 times 6 is 42. So our solution is 42. Here's a tricky one, which is actually pretty easy. Um, we have negative x equals 17. And there are a few ways we can solve this. First, um, and probably the more popular solution, is to divide both sides by negative 1. Because this negative x, we can think of it as if it's negative 1x. And negative 1 divided by negative 1 is 1. That leaves us with x equals negative 17, which is our solution set, negative 17. However, there are two other ways we could have solved this. Um, over here to the side, I could have multiplied both sides by negative 1. Because negative 1 times negative x yields a positive x. And negative 1 times 17 is negative 17. The last way we could solve it is actually through reasoning, which is a pretty good idea. This equation, negative x equals 17, can be read as the opposite of x is 17. Well, if the opposite of x is 17, what number is x? And we can reason that out to be the opposite of 17, or negative 17. Uh, a little tricky here. Uh, the negative 6 is attached to x through multiplication. So we're going to go ahead and divide both sides by negative 6. So far, it seems just like the others. Negative 40 divided by negative 6, the negative signs. Uh, negative divided by negative is positive, so we know that's going to disappear. But we have a problem we haven't seen before, in that 40 divided by 6 uh, doesn't work out evenly. What you have to do in this case is you have to reduce this improper fraction to lowest terms. Uh, what goes into 40 and 6? Well, we know that 2 does, so we can divide both the numerator and denominator by 2, and we're left with a solution of 20 thirds. Now, you may be wondering, why couldn't we make that a decimal instead of an improper fraction? Well, 20 over 3 works out to be 6.6666 with that 6 repeating. If you rounded this to any sort of decimal, it wouldn't be the exact solution. You may also be wondering, well, why don't we make this a mixed number? In general, making it a mixed number is unnecessary. Uh, for starters, if I made this 6 and 2 thirds and then I wanted to check my work, I'd have to change it back to 20 over 3 anyway. Uh, second, if I solved it correctly to this point and then I made a mistake making it a mixed number, I made a mistake doing something extra, and you never want to do that. So uh, leave it as a reduced improper fraction. Here we have a fraction multiplied by x equal to 27. Um, what is the opposite or the inverse of multiplication? It's division. How do you divide by a fraction? You multiply by its reciprocal. So one way we could solve this is by multiplying both sides by 4 thirds. Notice what happens. 4 divided by 4 is 1. 3 divided by 3 is 1. We're left with just x on the left-hand side. On the right-hand side, you may want to think of 27 as 27 over 1. But we reduce the 3 with the 27. And we multiply what's left. 9 times 4 is 36. In the next section, I'm going to show you that an equation that has fractions uh, can be solved pretty easily by getting rid of the fractions first. So I'm going to ignore the 3 part and just think about x divided by 4. What I did before was multiply both sides by 4. Now I'm left with a new equation, 3x equals 108. If I divide both sides by 3, I get the, the solution x equals 36. Same thing. Uh, so if you think about it in the original one, I multiply by 4 thirds. That's the same as multiplying by 4 first and dividing by 3 second, which I did down here. Either case, the solution set is 36, or contains 36. If you're in my online class, the suggested homework for this section is 1 through 6, the vocabulary questions. 
and 7 through 99 every other odd. If you have any questions or comments, or if you have a request for a video that I can put together for you on YouTube, you can reach me through the contact page on my website, and the address there is georgewoodbury.com. Thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you next time.